And there's my little uh, tender. It's my, uh, it's a pretty uh, cute little thing. It's a flat bottomed, uh, it's an old Quintrex. It's probably about uh, as old as the boat. It's probably about 40 years old. Uh, it's pretty stable. And uh, yeah, I kind of like that little, that little eight footer. This is my beautiful Leoden, my uh, 32 foot Nicholson. Looks like that uh, bow needs a bit of a clean. I've... Well, this week uh, it's going to be another fun-filled, exciting episode. Well, this week I'm going to be uh, focusing on some safety aspects uh, of the interior of the boat, which is uh, really going to be um, securing down some stuff like the batteries and uh, my angle fridge. Well, this is my uh, antique angle fridge. Uh, it's a beauty. It's one of the old metal ones. And uh, it's very solid, really strong. It's got these uh, good solid um, metal handles on there, which are, um, are really a good feature because it'll allow me to put these uh, two U-bolts on there. And the idea is that I'll be securing them down with these four uh, turnbuckles there. And they, in turn, will be held down ultimately um, by these securing... Uh, mounts there on the floor so um, I've got some uh, nice stainless steel screws and uh, let's get into it okay well I'm just having a bit of a squiz as to um, the distance these should be apart I think I'll uh, I think I want to have them on the actual sort of uh, on the straight bit there before it curves around and so that is yeah we're looking around about seven and a half inches there or about 19 centimeters and uh, so I'll just uh, correspond that with the, uh, the mounting blocks on the, uh, on the sole there. And clip the other one on. And hook it up to the U-bolt. Well, slight change in plan. I've decided to um, have the U-bolts actually sort of nestle right down there. Um, it slopes down a bit, so they naturally will go down into those, into where it curves around and attaches to the fridge. And I think the benefit is too that it sits flat against the fridge, which is good. I think that's uh, slightly better there. So just got those uh, tension down. Now these will be ultimately, uh, yeah, held down with um, some nice strong 10 mil galvanized u-bolts down the bottom there but that's uh, a couple of galvanized turnbuckles and uh, they secure down nice and solidly yeah she's as solid as a rock so there they are uh, all solid all screwed down and bolted down and uh, I don't think that fridge is going to go anywhere that's one job out of the way uh, the next stage is to get the two batteries that run the fridge uh, secured down and uh, just to make sure they won't sort of flop around in the, in the ocean. So uh, I bought a couple of uh, pretty groovy um, battery mounts. So right next to my fridge there, you can see the two batteries, uh, two lead acid batteries. They're uh, marine deep cycles, uh, 100 amp hours. They run the uh, angle fridge really well. And there's the, uh, the mount that I've bought, which is, I guess the groovy thing about it is it's got this uh, metal bit that'll bolt down to the floor. I'll screw that down with some nice big soft tappers and this just uh, clamps over the top of it and secures it down. So that's going to be uh, a nice solid uh, fix for that. Okay, I'm just checking out these uh, battery mounts uh, just to see how they go, a bit of a dry fit. So uh, there's the clamp on the top. On, this, on the side there, there's a lip, which is great. That's going to be pushed up against there, so that'll just provide a little bit of extra security. But most of the security will be from the base plate being uh, bolted to the floor. And once they're all uh, secured in, I'm planning to put some uh, plastic battery covers over them as well, just so they can't be uh, accidentally shorted out. That wouldn't be good. So uh, I've been scraping down all the, off the old varnish and... Uh, basically use these scrapers at the moment. This is a fairly cheap one from Bunnings and uh, this is a, a better quality one and it's a metal one and uh, I was just rummaging around on the uh, on the boat and found this one which is a, a kind of a pretty groovy looking solid looking thing with a 
heavy duty looking blade on it. So I'm just going to try this and see how that goes. Well, you can see it sort of gets the stuff off there. Yeah, the blade blade needs a bit of a sharpen. Now it's uh, time to oil the timber around the uh, cockpit but um, I guess probably some people might be thinking that a, an oiled surface will be a slippery surface but uh, it's counterintuitive actually uh, that a varnish surface often is uh, quite glassy and when it gets wet it gets very slippery and uh, just that uh, timber around the uh, cockpit is something that I'll be uh, stepping up and stepping down off all the time it's quite a deep cockpit on a Nicholson 32 so it's just a case of um, I'm not really going after a really shiny polished timber finish. I'm actually leaving a bit of a uh, bit of a texture on it as I sand it, and uh, this will just uh, enhance the uh, the grip that it will provide as I'm uh, you know going in and out of the cockpit. So that's the uh, that's what I'm I'll be doing, and uh, so uh, let's put some oil on this stuff. Okay, well another little task is to uh, clean the lining of the roof here. It's got this uh, kind of spongy roof, which is great. But if you sort of happen to sort of uh, go upside down out at sea or whatever, you're going to have got a bit of cushioning there. So it's just made out of vinyl. Now one of the issues is, is that uh, there's a little bit of marks here from, um, I guess it's just from people's heads, because you've got to duck your head just down under here. Um, when you go up to the uh, the bow section, I guess one of the things I love about this boat is the fact that um, I'm six foot tall and I can just scrape underneath this uh, without having to tilt my head. So it's nice to have a boat you can stand up in, or at least uh, at least at least in half of the uh, the main salon anyway. So I've just mixed up some uh, mild detergent and I've got a sponge and I'm just going to give it a bit of a once over and uh, to see how it goes. So I'm just going to squirt some uh, of this uh, mild detergent on this sponge. I can actually see it's actually working. It's uh, just a, a mild diluted detergent mixture. And it's, uh, it's actually getting rid of marks. There's a mark there. You can just see it disappear. I've done the entire roof, just been all over it with uh, the sponge and the mild detergent. And you can see it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, starting to uh, exit again out through all the little holes. I just did it very lightly with a, with a big thick sponge, so there's no real heavy uh, application. I didn't want to tear the, the vinyl, it's probably, could be 30 or 40 years old that vinyl, but it's in excellent condition. And I just wanted to stay that way, so uh, now it's just a ca case of just drying it off with a tea towel.
when I'm on my own on the boat, I uh, really indulge in listening to a few podcasts on my old Bluetooth speaker here. And uh, some of the ones I, uh, I can recommend are, um, it's a talking book. It's about two um, Swedish sailors and it's called Brave or Stupid. These two guys who buy a, it's a 42 foot Halberg Russi and uh, they sail it around the world. Just a really great story, really well read. And uh, it's called Brave or Stupid. I recommend that. Um, of course, Joshua Slocum's Sailing Single-Handedly Alone Around the World is, uh, is a great, a great uh, one to listen to. It's an audio book. Um, as far as sailing podcasts, I really like um, On the Wind with Mia Carlson and Andy Schell. And uh, who else? There's David Howe's um, sailing podcast, which I, the name escapes me at the moment. He's an Australian guy, does a really, uh, a really good podcast. Um, there's one, the sailing podcast, which is good. Uh, I also like just listening to general sort of stuff like uh, Stuff You Should Know, which is just a really great, um, I don't know, it's just got a whole lot of information. They've done over a thousand episodes. They pick a topic and then just really delve into it. That's really great. Um, I really enjoy listening to um, um, Richard Feidler um, with Conversations. It's an ABC podcast where they do interviews. Uh, always a great interviews. And Richard Feidler is uh, probably my favourite um, interviewer of all time, really. I mean, he, he'll give David Froster a run for his money, that's for sure, and Parker. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of just for entertainment, I just enjoy um, another podcast called uh, You Must Remember This by Katrina Longworth. It's uh, it's all about the history of Hollywood, which is kind of fascinating. It's, she delves deeply into uh, a lot of the subjects and the, um, the mysteries and the uh, backstories of uh, Hollywood actors, which is kind of interesting if you enjoy that kind of stuff. Well, today I've got a fun job, which is to uh, clean the hull of the boat. This boat uh, lived on a river for uh, most of its life, so there was uh, some telltale staining, especially around the bow where it was ploughing through the water. Well, one of the uh, essential items for me on uh, my old sailing boat is to have uh, my old uh, $100 Hona acoustic guitar with me and um, at night time I just um, enjoy tuning it up and uh, you know just having a bit of a strum so um, kind of just something that I uh, just enjoy doing and um, just whiles away the hours mm -hmm. 